Welcome to Unit 12, Video 4, Single Replacement. By the end of this video, you should recognize single replacement reactions. You should be able to use an activity series to determine if and why a reaction will occur. You should be able to predict the products of a single replacement reaction. And because I'm squeezing this into this video, you should also recognize a combustion reaction and know the products. Note this has nothing to do with single replacement, but it's a very small amount of material, so I'm putting it in this video. Single replacement reactions are reactions in which one substance is displaced from a compound by another substance. The general scheme is A plus BC yields AC plus B. In other words, an element by itself comes in and displaces an element from the compound and bonds with the other element in the compound to yield AC plus B, which was displaced. There are three kinds of single replacement reactions. We can have a metal replacing a metal. For example, in this case, magnesium metal replaces gold metal to form magnesium chloride and gold. We can have a metal replacing hydrogen to form H2 gas. Again, in this example, magnesium is displacing hydrogen to yield MgCl2 plus H2. Or we can have a halogen replacing a halogen. Recall that the halogens are group 7 or group 17 of the periodic table. For example, in this case, our halogen, bromine, replaces iodine, and we end up with KBr and I2. In order for a single replacement reaction to occur, a more reactive element must be replacing a less reactive element. If a less reactive element attempts to replace a more reactive element, no reaction will occur. So how do we determine which element is most reactive? Well, we can look at an activity series. In this activity series, we see that the most reactive elements are at the top and the least reactive elements are at the bottom. Notice if we're dealing with a metal replacing metal or a metal replacing hydrogen reaction, we're going to look on this side of the activity series. Here, lithium, for example, can replace any other element because it's the most reactive. Whereas on this list, gold can't replace any other element on this list because it's the least reactive. If we're dealing with a halogen replacing halogen reaction, we can look at this side. Here we see that fluorine is the most reactive and can replace chlorine, bromine, and iodine, whereas iodine is the least reactive and can't replace anything above it. We can use the activity series to predict whether or not a reaction will happen and from there we can predict products. Let's look at the first one together. Here we have potassium looking to replace iron. So let's find each of these on our activity series. Here's potassium up near the top, and iron is slightly further down the list. Since potassium is more reactive than iron, it will be able to replace iron in this reaction. Therefore, a reaction will occur. In this case, potassium will displace iron, giving us solid iron, solid because it's a metal, and potassium chloride. Since potassium has a positive one charge and chlorine has a negative one charge, we get KCl. And because it's an ionic compound, it's going to be a solid. Now we need to balance the equation, so I'll balance my chlorides by putting a 3 in front of KCl, and my potassiums by putting a 3 in front of K. This is now a balanced single replacement reaction. Pause the video here and try the rest on your own. Note that a reaction may not occur based on the activity series. If this is the case, just write no reaction. When you come back, I'll reveal the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. Notice that the reactants in the, in the third one and the reactants in the last one do not produce reactions, since the individual elements are not more reactive than the elements they're trying to displace.
That's all the information you need for single replacement reactions. I just want to cover one more type of reaction while we're here. That's a combustion reaction. A combustion reaction is easy to identify because it only has two products, CO2 and water. So anytime you see carbon dioxide and water in your products, you should know that you have a combustion reaction. Combustion reactions occur when fuel, usually a hydrocarbon, a compound containing, containing hydrogen and carbon, react with oxygen to form CO2 and water. Here's a few examples of some important combustion reactions. And again, the products will always be carbon dioxide and water. Just to be clear, combustion reactions aren't directly related to single replacement reactions in any way, but I just wanted to squeeze this into a video somewhere so that you had this information in your notes. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we learned to recognize single replacement reactions as reactions where one element displaces an element in a compound to yield a new compound and a new individual element. Then we used the activity series to determine if, a why, if and why a reaction will occur. Re elements that are more reactive will replace elements that are less reactive. Then we learned to predict the products of a single replacement reaction, taking charge into account. And finally, we looked at how to recognize a combustion reaction and to know the products are CO2 and water.